How's everybody doing? It's Double B Billy Boo Journal here with my Impact Wrestling review for the week of January nineteenth, two thousand and twelve. Let's um, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, we we'll open up with a segment in verse involving James Storm talking about his big title, uh, big number one contendership win, and uh, then we have Jeff Hardy who comes out. He says, you know, he's got screwed twice by Bobby Roode, which technically he did, and. Uh, you know, before anybody else gets a title match with Bobby Roode, he, he's going to get one. And then Bobby Roode comes out and says that uh, since both guys failed, and you know, the terms of the agreement that happened, or the terms of what Sting said last week, is you know, if uh, James Storm beat Kurt Angle, then he would become number one contender and would face the winner of the Bobby Roode Jeff Hardy match. Now, since there was no winner from the Jeff Hardy Bobby Roode match. Bobby Roode says that James Storm's number one contendership is null and void, and in a sense, it's kind of right if you think about it. You know, he's got it. You know, when you want to fulfill a contract, in a sense, you know, you you gotta have every set of that contract fulfilled. Now, he had one part fulfilled, but the other part was not fulfilled. So, you know, I'm just thinking out loud, guys. You know, but then again, that's why you watch my videos to hear me ramble and think out loud. So Sting comes out and uh, makes a match, a number one contendership match tonight between James Storm and Jeff Hardy. And uh, that has, you know, just on paper, Cowboy James Storm and Jeff Hardy have the makings for an incredible match. Just on paper. But then again, there is a difference with on paper and execution. I'll explain in. I'll explain in a. Well, uh, if if I don't explain on this video, I'll explain in another video. You know, because you know, technically, this is my impact review, not an explanation of you know execution, being on paper and execution. But um, anyway, opening match it was Gunner and AJ Styles. Gunner is just rising. You know, the, you know, he's getting better and better every week. I see him. You know, he's. You know, building up a good intensity. Um, you know, okay. Kind of trying to pass him off. I want to say maybe as, uh, you know, a heelish Goldberg, maybe. Maybe. Because maybe. But, because uh, we all know Goldberg, you know, for those of you who don't know, Goldberg was heel in WCW, but it was for an extremely short period of time. Yeah, I'm going to say about a month at best. It lasted that long. But, uh, I really like it, um, but... They're can, they basically used this opening match to kind of further the saga of AJ Styles, Kazarian, and Daniels. Because Daniels distracted the referee. Um, Kazarian clotheslined AJ Styles from behind. And Gunner capitalizes on it and gets the victory. And if I remember correctly, after the match was over, they go on the outside. Gunner attempts to DDT AJ Styles on the floor. Ric Flair was holding the referee. Yeah, Ric Flair's still in TNA, but he's supposed to be in the WWE Hall of Fame with the Four Horsemen in a few, just a few weeks. Anyway. But AJ Styles was able to get away, so again, that's pretty much what they've did, done with this opening match, was used it to further the saga of AJ Styles, Daniels, and Kazarian. You know, they really weren't doing anything much with uh, Gunner, so this is basically, you know, an entire match and a segment Surrounded with the, the storyline of Styles, Daniels, and Kazarian. Then, um, speaking of continuing sagas, to pick up where they left off last week, it's a uh, Crimson and Brutus Magnus. You know, an, an intense tag team rivalry, and that's something we really don't see in professional wrestling anymore today. Is intense tag team rivalries. But uh, they're trying to do on here with uh, Crimson and Matt Morgan, Brutus Magnus, and Samoa Joe. Um, it was a one-on-one -on -one contest with Crimson and Magnus. Very short, pretty much almost like, I want to say about 90% of Crimson's matches are short. About 85-90%. And uh, Crimson hits the uh, his finishing move. I'm trying to remember if it was like Sky Red or something like that. Something of that in that nature. If you guys can correct me, please do, because I, I don't want to come on here sounding like an idiot. But uh, anyway, he comes and hits that move, and it's 
one, two, three. Crimson's still undefeated, and then Samojo comes out, starts to beat down Matt Morgan, comes out to make the save, but uh, during the ruckus, Samojo clips him from behind, and then uh, Magnus and Joe beat down Crimson. Now, they were using this time to set up the uh, steel cage because, you know, I, on last week's review and on the radio show, I kind of made a mistake. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and forwardly admit it. When we were talking about Impact Wrestling, I said that it was going to be Mickey James and Gail Kim in the steel cage match. I was wrong on that one. It turned out to be Madison Rain. And um, and Mickey James in the steel cage, not Gail Kim and Mickey James. I do apologize for that error. But uh, while they were doing to set that up, they were cutting a lot of promos, and uh, one in particular, um, Angelina Love challenging Eric Young. I'm sorry, but we were just kicked out of our apartment and don't have anywhere to go. I don't know. See, this is my that was my reaction to it right here. Was this? Okay. My husband, he believes in I have no idea why they did that. So, then, welcome home. Well, if, if you think about it, well, when we get up to the match, we'll talk about it. Let's uh, let's talk about the, the steel cage match between Mickey James and Madison Rain. Um, I've said it on countless occasions, not very often you see a steel cage match involving leading wrestlers. But, uh, yeah, two good ones in here with uh, Mickey James and Madison Rain. I will admit it. You know, I just love it when you get ladies wrestlers in there who not only have the look, but actually have the talent to pull off a good match. And about 90, 95% of the knockouts in TNA have the look and, and have talent. So, uh, very interesting. Um, apparently, this is like the cultivation of the few, you know, the, the last few matches that Mickey James had with Gail Kim over the knockouts title. Mickey James, I'm sorry, Madison Rain as a run in interference, therefore costing uh, Mickey James the knockouts title. And uh, so we're finally going to have uh, Mickey James and Madison Rain in a steel cage set up by the Stinger. And apparently, his new uh, catchphrase for uh, some reason is no longer Showtime. It's a ta-ta for now. Anyway. Really, I'm, I really like this match. There are a lot of good spots. Um, I get the feeling if, uh, if you guys remember Roxy, the hardcore knockout, if uh, she was involved in the steel cage match, you know, I, I know she's not afraid to bleed in a match. You know, she, in fact, the, she did a uh, a chair shot, uh, and she was busted open for it, or or any other uh, term you want to think to call it, but she still bled. And uh, I can't think of many leading wrestlers who would actually want to go through with that. But um, anyway, I really like the match, to be honest with you. It may be my match of the night for Impact Wrestling. Because... Um, Mickey James defeated Madison Rain in this match. Nothing, nothing bad about this match. I can't say nothing bad about the way the the execution of, of this match. It was really well done. And the, you know, Mickey James, she's a known talent. She's really good. Madison Rain uh, made her start in TNA and really rose through the ranks. She's becoming a really good heel knockout for the company. So. I, like I said, I really have nothing bad at all to say about this match. Really well done. And I like the fact that following it, they had a segment. There was uh, Mickey James, Velvet Sky, and Tess Mocker. No, no, Tara. I'm sorry. Tara, Tara, Velvet Sky, and Mickey James. I apologize. And uh, they're all happy that uh, Mickey James got the win. And they're not talking about who's going to be the new number one contender. And I believe it was set up. For uh, next week, uh, Tara, uh, Velvet Sky, and Mickey James for the number one contendership. If, you know, if my notes are still correct. Then we had a segment involving Austin Aries and a surprise return of Alex Shelley. I really was not expecting uh, expecting Alex Shelley back already. I mean, you know, he was gone for uh, a good while, and 
You know, he made it clear in this promo he went, wanted to make his return with Chris Saban, who I believe is still rehabbing his his injury. Yeah, the torn MCL and ACL. I actually spoke with them um, right after the injury happened, and he gave me like a prognosis about I would say about four to six months at, at best. But um, that was a while back. I'm trying to remember the exact date of that in injury. I'm thinking maybe it was in some time in. I I remember the injury when it happened. I'm just having a little bit of a. A little brain fart here, I'm trying to remember the uh, the date of it, but I, I do. It was like on a springboard, springboard move, and then yeah, you know, as soon as he leapt off, he landed wrong and just blew the hell out of his leg. So, but um, and I have to admit, the Motor City Machine Guns, they've been missed. They've been missed. Really great tag team, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban. Then again, it's my opinion. Uh, you guys have, probably have y'all opinions as well. But uh, anyway, apparently we're now going to have a feud. Um, you know, Austin Aries and Alex Shelley and uh, for Alex Shelley get a shot at the X Division title. You know, he made the challenge for Austin Aries to pick an opponent for him, and if he wins, then he will become the number one contender and get the uh, the next shot at I believe at the next pay per view. And then the uh, they go to backstage. ODB is cutting a, a a promo about the uh, Eric Young Angelina Love match. Uh, then Winter comes out and just basically goes dominatrix on her and beats the snot out of her with a belt. And then Eric Young Angelina Love. What in the what in the bloody hell was that? Um. Basically, you have the typical Eric Young antics, him going around the ring, and then uh, he actually locked up with a fan. I'm pretty sure that that's the night that fan will never forget, or never will want to remember for the rest of his life. And for several times, he uh, locks up with the referee, and at one point makes the referee lock up on Angelina Love, pushes them into the corner, and Eric Young thinks he's the official and starts counting them. And then the match ends when Angelina Love just flat out punts Eric Young in the penis. My goodness, you're a strong one, aren't you? Yeah. And it wasn't like a whoop. It was a whoop. It was like Cock back and poof. That's the way it was. I mean, she has some force in that kick. Then Winter comes out, and they both start beating the ever loving uh, crap out of Eric Young. And then uh, ODB comes out and uh, makes the save at first on Eric Young. And then uh, Eric Young gets up, still holding his crotch from that that punt in the penis from uh, Angelina Love, and. Stops Winter. Winter had taken off her belt again and was going to whack ODB with it, but uh, Eric Young stopped her and uh, got them both out the ring. And next thing you know, ODB and Eric Young are making out. Yeah. My head hurts from that. And then the number one contendership match, Jeff Hardy and James Storm. Like I said, I'm sorry. Two guys who are two well-known performers. That, you know what you can carry a main event, and they did. But what I don't like about it is they did it again. They did it again. They ended another show with a no contest. Let me explain. In this match, uh, at one point in the match, it was like, it might have been, I'm trying to remember when, but Bully Ray comes up with his chain, knocks the referee out, then proceeds to assault Jeff Hardy and James Storm with this chain. You know, multiple officials come out and they both get assaulted with the, uh, with the chain. And I say multiple, I mean two or three maybe. And then Sting comes out with the baseball bat and chases Bully Ray off. But, um... Next thing you know, Bobby Roode comes out, hits both James Storm and Jeff Hardy with the title belt, 
and declare, picks up the microphone and says, by the power invested in him as the world heavyweight champion, he declares his match a uh, no contest. So they end another show with a no contest. Here's what I see coming, guys. This is just, you know, me thinking off the top of my head. You know, it's, it, we got two possible scenarios. Well, three, because uh, one might be an ex a big if, but I don't think they're really going to do it. But, you know, two genuine possibilities as to where they're going to go with this. All right. Now, at the pay-per-view, we could have possibly a, a four-way elimination match. We could have Bobby Roode as the champion, James Storm, Jeff Hardy, and Bully Ray. And, and a four-way elimination-style dance for the World Heavyweight title. Scenario number two. We have a three-way dance next week on Impact to crown a new number one contender. James Storm, Jeff Hardy, and Bully Ray. For some reason, I see one of those two scenarios coming out. The big if one, the, the number three one, but again, that's a, a really big if. They might be working something with Sting and Bully Ray, you never, you never know. You never know. But it's, it, like I said, it's a, it's a big if. I really don't think it's going to happen. But you know, it's a big if. It's a, a big if. I really don't think it's going to happen. But I just had to throw that out there. So just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, match of the night definitely is the the knockouts cage match with uh, Mickey James and Madison Rain. I thought it was really well done with the uh, main event coming in the second place and uh, Eric Young and ODB lip locking a third. And what I want to know now is what did you guys think of Monday Night Raw? What was your match or moment of the night? I want to hear from you. Leave your comments in the comment section below or in a video response. Again, with your thoughts on TNA Impact Wrestling. You know, what was your match of the night and why? So, don't forget, if you like this review, as well as my my other reviews, be sure you hit that like, bu like button, if I can talk. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, you know, every subscriber is appreciated here on the WGS TV YouTube channel. So... With that being said, I'm Double B. Bully Blue Joe saying thank you very much for watching. Calm down. You gotta stop this. Yeah, listen to him. Get away from him. Now. Oh, Jesus. 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 Jesus.